Obviousness. What is obviousness or inventive step? I am Rolf Klesen, patent attorney and partner with Freisham and Partner, and every Thursday I'm publishing a new video about patents, trademarks or designs. First of all, something about the wording. The European Patent Office speaks of inventive step, whereas, the, for example, the USPTO speaks of obviousness. These are pretty much exactly the same concepts. And since I'm a European patent attorney, I will talk about inventive step. Just rest assured, I will always mean obviousness as well when talking about inventive step. In this video, I will show you how the European Patent Office assesses inventive step or obviousness and how to craft an ideal attack based on inventive step in opposition proceedings. First of all, you would find the closest prior art. This is, for example, a document that teaches a very similar concept to the concept of claim one to be attacked, and it should be in the exactly same technical field. Ideally, there's only one single difference compared to the claim that you want to attack. Then you determine the objective technical problem. Does the patent application, the specification, teach any advantage for this difference over the prior art? If the description, if the patent does not teach any advantage, or if there is no obvious advantage, over the prior art, then the objective technical problem is just to provide an alternative, which is the weakest technical problem possible, so ideal for an attack. Let's use an example. Let's imagine you want to attack a claim with a car with four wheels and a rear view mirror. Let's assume um, a car with four wheels and a rear view mirror is not known in the prior art, but there is a document that teaches a car with four wheels. So that would be your closest prior art. Then you have the rear view mirror as a differentiating feature and the description might teach that the rear view mirror in a car has the advantage that there are less accidents because the driver can recognize dangerous or speeding cars or any problems behind the car. So the objective technical problem would be to avoid collisions with other cars. Once you have defined the closest prior art and the objective technical problem, you have to find out whether the solution of this problem would be obvious to the skilled person in the art. So you would have to not only show whether the skilled person could have arrived at the invention by modifying the closest prior art to fit the invention, but also if the skilled person would have arrived at the invention. So for example, if the skilled person would have combined a second document that teaches a rear view mirror for avoiding collisions with the closest prior art. Ideally, you would, you would find a second document that teaches how to avoid collisions by a rear view mirror, maybe in other vehicles than cars. And then the skilled person would have an incentive to combine these two documents because the first one doesn't teach the rear view mirror and the technical problem would be to avoid collisions with other vehicles. And then there is a second document that teaches the, uh, how to avoid collisions by using a rear view mirror. So the skilled person would have an incentive to combine these two documents. Going back to our example, if we have the closest prior art that differs from the claim to be attacked only by the rear view mirror, and then you find a document uh, with bicycles that have rear view mirrors to avoid collisions, then I think that would be quite an ideal document to combine this with the car document with four wheels to arrive at the invention. I hope I was able to explain how the European Patent Office determines the inventive step or obviousness. If you are new to my channel and want to learn more about patents, trademarks and designs, then please subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and comments and questions are answered below this video. And most importantly, protect your intellectual property and go make it count.